Yeah. Okay, hi everyone, we're back. So today we're starting with efficiency. Um, and I wrote down some notes here. Doing work is the transfer of energy from one form to another. However, not all of the energy is transferred to usual work in this process. Some of the energy is always lost to friction in the form of heat. And to calculate what percentage is transferred, we use the efficiency formula which is efficiency equals work output divided by work input times 100%. Now what this means is that the work output is actually less than the work input. So an example of this is, for example, if you put work into something of let's say uh, 40 joules and the work that you get out of it is 20 joules let's say this is electrical energy and this is let's say this is uh, gravitational potential energy or something to that effect essentially now with this you've got 20 uh, divided by 40 times 100 which gives you an efficiency of about, well, exactly 50%. So that's kind of little, that's a little example. Okay, so we have a question here where we have a motor at the top of a building that is lifting a mass of five kilos to the top. Maybe it's shingles, maybe it's paint. Uh, and the motor is powered by electricity and it has to raise this mass 12 meters. So we're going to create some losses in this system but what's clear here is that this system is not a closed system. So usually when we write initial energy equals final energy usually this is for a closed system. But in this case, since we have electricity coming in and we're also going to have frictional losses, we have to modify this equation to say it's the initial energy plus the energy uh, that is gain in energy and that's equal to the final energy plus the energy that is lost. So. I like to word, use the words gain and lost um, and you'll see what I mean by this. So um, initially what we have is we don't have any kinetic energy, nothing's moving and also initially we don't have any gravitational potential energy because the mass is at the bottom. So our initial energy is going to be zero. Okay, then we're going to say, well, we have some kind of a gain in the form of electricity that's being, that's powering the motor. And then that's going to equal our final, and our final position, if I kind of quickly maybe draw it again, and if I maybe switch it, or actually, let's do it on this side so we can see both. Usually I write final on the left, but in this case, I'll, I'll draw it uh, over here. Here's the motor, here's the pulley, okay? And it, the mass now is going to be at the top. So now, you know, we can say, okay, this is H, we know the H is 12. So in this case, if, if this is the final position and this is the initial, now we know that the, um, oops, yeah, let's go like that. We know now that we're going to have MGH final as our final energy, plus we're going to have some energy lost due to the form of heat coming out of the motor. 
Okay, so we're going to have heat losses in the motor. Uh, let's first calculate how much energy is required if our our losses are negligible. In other words, let's say this motor was 100% efficient. That means the energy, the required energy, I can say gain here. When I say gain, it's the system that is gaining this energy, right? I can, I can also write the required energy is equal to mgh. In this case, it's 5 kilos times 9.8 times 12. So this gives us 588 joules of energy required to lift the mass to the top. Now, that 588 joules is coming from electricity, but in fact, what ends up happening is that the motor actually uses the motor uses 700 joules okay from the from the uh, look if we had a if we had a measuring device here you know where this was plugged into the wall and this this was measuring how much electricity was consumed that thing would tell us hey you consumed 700 joules of energy well now we can say aha we now have a difference of what was required and what was actually used and so that is so in other words the amount that went into the system so if we rewrite this equation again down here we say E gain or I, sh I should say uh, I can also call this input the input energy to the system and I can use the word lost or output is equal to mgh plus the energy lost or out of the system. Um, I'm, I'm going to use the word lost because I'm going to assume that heat loss, this is heat losses. That's not useful energy unless you're actually using it as a heater. So here we'll say this is 700 and this is 588. Therefore, our losses must be the difference, which is 112 joules. That means we lost to heat 112 joules. OK? So another way of thinking about this to simplify it is essentially we require 588 joules of energy to lift this mass. But what we actually used, we actually used 700 joules to lift it. Therefore, the difference between 588 and 700 was lost to heat. Okay? So that's, that's like the total, right? This is what we actually required but we use more we use more than we required so let's write down what work was input into the system it's 700 joules 
what work did we actually uh, do? That was 588. What's the efficiency in this case? So the efficiency would be work out divided by work in times 100. That's going to equal 588 divided by 700 times 100, which is which is 84 percent. Okay, so here's another question. It's a roller coaster uh, that is at the top of a 20 meter height and it's traveling with 5 meters per second and it goes down and comes back up to an 8 meter height. We have to figure out how fast it's going. Um, but instead of calculating how fast it's going, what if I was to give you the velocity? So what if I was to say um, that the velocity is at this point is going 10 meters per second? What I need you to try and calculate is how much energy was lost to heat. Okay, or you know other frictional losses, but with, which all essentially end up as heat. Okay, so what was the energy lost in this system? Go ahead and pause the video now and try and solve it. Okay, so to solve this problem, we could say initial energy is equal to final energy, but in the final energy part, we're going to have to include heat. So we'll say Ke initial plus GPE initial is equal to Ke final plus GPE final plus energy lost. Now this is in the form of heat loss due to or you know heat loss <coughs> from friction. Um, essentially, now since we, we just want to figure out what this value is, all we want to do is take this, take this term and this term, take it to the other side of the equal sign, and we'll end up with Ke initial minus Ke final. And then we've got GPE initial minus GPE final equals energy lost. Now if we if we write this out, we'll have one half M V initial squared minus one half M V final squared plus M G H I minus M G H F. Now you know we can collect some like terms here, like this term and this term is liked. So we can simplify the math just by going like this. And this and this. There. Now let's plug our numbers through. Okay, so <coughs> essentially I'll copy this equation down to here, but I'll go one half sixty and V initial is five squared minus V in final, that's ten squared, right? 
the 10 here and the 5 here. And then plus 60 times 9.8 times initial height was 20 minus 8. And that's going to give us, so that gives us approximately 4,806 joules. Um, now, that's, that, that, that's totally fine, and we, we found the energy that was lost to heat. Okay? Um, however, what was if let's say we didn't have this 10 let's let me just change colors here for a second let's say this 10 here let's say we didn't have that then could we calculate what the velocity should have been assuming no frictional losses okay so Let's try that. Let's let's actually push it up a bit. And let's go like this. Assume no losses. What is the final velocity. So in order to do this, we would take the same equation, okay? We take <coughs> this one here, except we wouldn't have any losses. So we would say initially, right? And we'd say 1 half mv initial squared plus mgh initial is equal to 1 half mv final squared plus mg final. And solving for the final velocity, vf, here, we would take this term to the other side. Minus mgh equals one half mvf squared and now we could simply <coughs> um, multiply both sides by two and we could also divide by m so we don't actually need the mass in that case we would multiply this side by two and take the square root so if we multiplied by two uh, we'd have the, this half would disappear and we get vi squared uh, plus 2GHI minus 2GHF. And we could simplify it even further, right? Uh, 2GHI minus HF. And then do this. and that's going to equal our final velocity. Now, if we did that, this is 5 squared plus 2 times 9.8. The initial height was uh, 20, and the final height was 8. And we'll take the square root of that to get Vf. And that gives us so this gives us 16.13 meters per second. Notice that this velocity was much bigger than the 10 in our original problem. Okay, So we lost this much energy to heat. That's how much we calculated it to be. Well, guess what? Is there another way to do this now that we have the the actual velocity that 
we were supposed to get. So there is a way to do this, and we could say that the work lost in this case is equal to the change in the kinetic energy between what we, in terms of what we, we should get with no friction and then with losses. Okay? So if you remember, um, our kinetic energy equation was one half mv squared. So the change in it, right, would be the difference between 16.1. So this velocity would be 16.13, and this velocity would be 10. So to calculate that, be careful here. Some students actually um, get this math wrong by going 16.13 minus 10 squared. And that's wrong. That, that, that's wrong. Don't do that. Okay. What we need to do here is we need to go 1 half m v squared minus v squared, where this is the one, let's say, uh, what should we call this for subscript? No friction. And this one is with friction. So the, with the friction, it's slower at 10. And without friction, ideally, 16.13. So if we do this, we get 1 half 60 times 16.13 squared minus 10 squared. And that's going to give us. So this turns out to be approximately uh, 4,805 point something. We can, we didn't use the exact rounded number for this, but it's going to be the same amount. So you notice that if we had the original velocity, we could have simply calculated the difference in kinetic energy between the 10 and the, and the 16 and we would have got our answer uh, of 4806 loss to friction. But hey, we got the answer either way without having the 16.13 with, with just having the 10 we were still able to calculate the, the correct answer either way. So I just thought of showing you that we could get the answer in two different ways. One way is if we did not have the ideal velocity and we were just given the 10, then we could calculate it. On the other hand, if we were given the ideal velocity that it should have, which was 16.13, then knowing that, we could have also calculated the amount of lo energy loss to friction simply by getting the change in the kinetic energy between the ideal value and what it actually had. This. I'm going to extend this um, question slightly now. I'm going to say, hey, you know what, listen. If this, let's go back up to the uh, drawing here. If this distance here, and I, I'll do this in a different color. If this distance all the way down now, I'm not talking about the vertical distance. I'm not talking about the distance between 8 and 20. I know that's 12. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this, this path that it has to take all the way from this point to this point. If that was 15 meters, what is the average force of friction? So. Remember, so I'll write down, so I'll say if 
the distance traveled along the track was 15 meters. What what was the average force of gosh I really messed up the word force didn't I force of friction so in order to do this um, <clears throat> what you have to understand here is that the work done to friction <coughs> The work done by friction is equal to the friction force <coughs> times the distance that it traveled. Remember, this is simply the equation work equals force times distance. Now, we happen to know that the work done by friction is here, 4,806. And we also happen to know, <coughs> so this is 4,806 joules. We also happen to know that the distance that the object traveled along the track was 15 meters. Therefore, to calculate the frictional force, that's easy. You just go work done by friction divided by d, the distance that it traveled, is equal to the friction force. And so our answer ends up being a really simple division, 4806 divided by 15 meters which gives us approximately 320 newtons. So the friction force, the average, <coughs> is about 320 newtons. So this is the most complicated that this type of question can get. Essentially, we're going from the energy lost to friction, and we're, we're taking that energy loss here, and we're, we're calculating uh, the average friction force due to that energy loss. So that's uh, that problem.